If you name any big movie, chances are likely that you'll name a movie that contains an FUI screen. An FUI screen is a fictional user interface, and you can see these things everywhere. They're in action movies and in sci-fi movies. They're even on TV shows and in commercials. In my opinion, the OG of the FUI screen is the video editing interface from Minority Report. I remember when I first saw this movie, it left a lasting impression. I, I just thought it was the most beautiful combination of storytelling, design, and functionality. Another design which helped to accelerate the popularity of the FUI screen is the heads-up display from the Iron Man and the Avengers series. This was also a really incredible design. It had some amazing animations and a lot of purposeful design. There are entire post and VFX houses that are dedicated to this type of animation and design, but with some clear design choices and some simple animation, I'm going to show you how you can make one too. At its core, the thing that makes an FUI screen an FUI screen is its design. It doesn't matter what kind of crazy animations that you have or what colors that you choose, if the design doesn't fit the world of that film or a commercial or project that you're working on, then it wouldn't inform the audience, it wouldn't uh, relate to the, uh, the storyline as much as it could. And that's why it's so important, because the story and the aspects of what's happening in the film will ultimately inform the way that your F FUI screen looks. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into Illustrator and start making an FUI screen of our own. I like to work in Illustrator because it is a vector format and you can zoom in and zoom out as much as you want and there'll be no loss of quality, especially when you are working in After Effects, which is what we're gonna animate it in. Okay, so first thing I like to do is work on a black background because oftentimes, you know, these screens are gonna be comped into a VFX uh, situation where it'll be on a dark background. So we can just turn the stroke off on that and then do black. I'm just gonna go ahead and lock that layer so we don't mess with it and start a new layer. And uh, we can start designing. Now, a design for an FUI screen can be um, inspired by just about anything. I like to visit some of the websites of the post houses and VFX houses that do this type of design, and I'll steal little elements from their designs or get inspired by a shape or a, a, a line or something that I see in their screen graphics. Uh, one of the people that I love to follow on Instagram and uh, I love their work is Territory Studio. Uh, they've done a ton of stuff recently for like Avenue 5, Watchmen, even, uh, you know, like Infinity War. You can click on their work and just see a ton of different types of screens that they've worked on. And I always love coming in here and checking out the different ways that uh, they'll use uh, 3D design or different lines to create awesome shapes and, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, different graphics for uh, certain things in the movie. Another place that I really love is Cantina Creative. Uh, they're responsible for a lot of the same tie-in work that we're used to seeing in some of those big budget movies. So you can click on some of them and come in here and just check out some of this, the work that they've done. And it's just so intricate and so beautiful. Um, I love to just come and look and be inspired by some of the things that they've done in the past. You can also get some inspiration from hudsandguis.com, which is a website specifically geared towards this type of uh, VFX and design. I also love to browse the designs and get inspiration from another company called Alt Incorporated or Alt Creative, which um, specializes in uh, this sort of FUI type of design as well, has done lots of really great surreal sci-fi work. Last but not least is a website called Behance, which is for graphic designers of all kind. And, uh, you know, they get to post work and people will vote on it and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's very cool. I love to come here to get inspired by all kinds of shapes and color schemes and, uh, you know, uh, uh, different types of even photographs and renders and things like that. I just, I just love it. So definitely check out those sites and get inspired for your design. But I think we're going to do something a little different. Just to show that it's possible to be inspired from literally anywhere, uh, let's pick a consumer product like, uh, let's see, something like a mouthwash bottle, right? Okay, so I don't know, maybe this one is pretty cool. Or let's pick a different one, something like this, right? Okay, let's just uh, copy that. And then we're gonna put that into, we're gonna put that into Illustrator. You kind of see, I, I was thinking maybe I like this curvature of this bottle right here, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, I'm just gonna use the pen tool and start on a new layer. And um, 
we're going to make some shapes and kind of see how it goes. And we'll start like this. Maybe do something like that. Pick up the path by clicking on the anchor. And we can go this way. Maybe we'll just stop there. And I'm going to switch it because we don't want a, we don't want a filled. We want it to be we want a stroke. And then I'm just going to turn it white. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of cool. That could be. And what I'm seeing here is this is kind of like a combination of you know curved and uh, straight lines. I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit. But uh, what I'm seeing here is this is a combination of long curves and then uh, pointed as straight lines, right? So we have some inspiration, but we need to figure out what it is that we're making this FUI screen for. And it could be anything. It could be a futuristic appliance. It could be a military device. It could be consumer electronics, right? Um, let's just say in this situation, it's going to be for a drone, like the first person view of a uh, police drone, uh, because that is the concept for my latest short film that I'm working on right now. And then I'm going to show you the FUI screen that I've developed for that. So if it's a if it's a first person view of a drone, um, you know, there might be a decent amount of of symmetry um, and there might be a lot of switches and there might be some user interface perhaps it's a holographic uh, user interface where the drone is flying around but there's somebody in a room that is controlling that from the hologram or something um, so let's let's give that a shot and we can just kind of come in here and you know we can add some different areas perhaps this is going to be the center of where the screen might be. I'm just going to kind of shorten that a little bit and then maybe we'll duplicate that and I'm just going to kind of mirror that flip it right and then we're just going to join these two right here so that's one shape and then we'll take that and just align it to the artboard and uh, maybe we'll kind of flip it this way too and we'll do We'll mirror that up and down. And then maybe we come in here with maybe come in here with the pen tool and we can create some options for our user. Perhaps there is a perhaps there is a person that is navigating this thing and they need things to select and they need things to, to choose from. And, and duplicate it and then flip that one. And I'm going to group that together and then align that to the center of the artboard. Oops, there we go. And then maybe we will take that and duplicate it, put it over here, and we'll just mirror that. And uh, yeah keep going let's see so maybe maybe uh, this curved section is a portion of the uh, field of view of the drone and I'm just kind of like seeing that maybe this is what it looks like when it's got you know kind of a it looks like a, a very very wide angle lens right so what if we came in here and made a supplementary line that was kind of like this you know maybe and then instead of instead of being going all the way through and then maybe I could instead of a straight line maybe we end it right here and so we can kind of like uh, illustrate to the audience that this is one line you know we're gonna kind of tell you but instead of a straight line maybe uh, we want like a dashed line and maybe um, we'll make them a little smaller let's see Something like that, maybe. Three, maybe we could make it even smaller. Just kind of a dotted line like that. We'll drag this one down here. We'll we'll mirror that so it's upwards, and uh, group it, and then just align that to the artboard so that's centered. So now you kind of have like a widescreen kind of a cinemascope look, which is kind of cool. And what else? So let's see. We can look at our. We can look at our mouthwash bottle. It looks like the cap is kind of cool too. It's got like a curved top to it. And then there's also, there's like a, it like kind of curves out and then it curves in. 
which is kind of cool. And that's probably so the person can grab it very easily, you know, with their thumb. And that's kind of cool. So maybe, maybe I'll I'll just do that, and then maybe what I'll do is cut that in half and mirror it so it's exactly the same. And then we can join these two. We can join these two. And I think it's a bit tall, but yeah, that's kind of cool, you know? And maybe, maybe, uh, let's see, instead of these, you know, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll move these. Because I think, let's, let's just ungroup that. Come in here. And maybe, maybe we just move these up here instead. Maybe, maybe these are like alternate options like that, and then we'll just like regroup them and then align them to the artboard like that. And then yeah, maybe this is kind of like a, uh, you know, a different kind of a, an option. Maybe that's just a, let me just uh, flip that one here. Yeah, and then maybe we can, we'll just group those together to make sure that they're centered. Always make sure that, uh, that all of your elements are centered like as exactly as possible. That, that kind of technological you know, precision is what's really important. And uh, what else? So I want to get a, a little bit more curved lines in here because I, I want to kind of pick up this kind, of, uh, this kind of design. Let me see. What if we kind of came in like this and did something like that? You know, and of course, if, if you do something and you don't like it, you know, just start over. It's uh, it's important to take your time in making a design that fits well with with the story. Um, yeah, this is looking kind of kind of crazy. Uh, let me see. Is, and uh, here here's an example. You can see here that you can see here that I've got like I have an angle that is less than ninety degrees. It's kind of, it's an acute angle, right? Well, this is also an acute angle, but this is not. And if you look around, thus far, we don't have any angles in the design that are like less than 90 degrees. They're all greater than. So it might start to feel a little weird if you, you know, if you're like making a design that has something that's such a sharp or pointed edge like this, but nothing else in your design is like an acute angle. You want to make sure you maintain that consistency. You know, so it might feel a little bit better if you were to make something that wasn't you know, that wasn't less than 90 degrees. This one might be okay over here because it's kind of following the same curvature that's over here. So one option is you could come in here with your direct selection tool, maybe maybe curve that edge and see if that's something that, you know, looks a little bit better with the design of your, you know, of, of your overall design. And yeah, I do, I kind of like that a little better. Um, maybe we try this one too, see, see if we kind of curve that. Uh, maybe we'll just leave that one sharp because I like how it kind of follows this. Although I think maybe we've got too much. I don't think we need all of this bottom stuff here, so we'll just kind of get rid of that and maybe move this anchor point um, like that. And maybe we'll kind of mirror it. And then maybe we can group these together. And... Maybe we can just duplicate that and mirror that thing. And then again, we'll group it together like that and align it with the artboard. And yeah, and what else? I mean, I think maybe I want to change these. I think I want to change these corners too because these, they're, these kind of sharp edges are kind of getting to me, and I think maybe, yeah, maybe that's okay for now. And uh, what else? Yeah, so we can get, uh, we can add some little cool, little arbitrary things too, which is always a lot of fun. You know, maybe do something that is like a little button or something that is a little extra that doesn't necessarily serve a function, but you know, maybe, maybe it does, maybe, Maybe it does. Maybe you know you tap this, and uh, this is the brightness of the entire screen, or something. You know, th these are the kind of things that you, you know, can kind of figure out and discover 
um, as you're designing your FUI screen. And uh, also, too, experiment with some other shapes. You know, maybe you've got uh, something like if this is a if this is a like a military drone or something, and maybe it's got you know crosshairs, or maybe it is you know something that is uh, you know navigating you know with like a you know like a, a compass. Uh, so let's kind of change that. Maybe maybe it's a dashed line. You know, kind of like this one, but maybe. Uh, it's just this outer portion, you know, you don't, you know, I, we don't want to necessarily cross lines if that's, you know, the kind of, the, we don't have anything like that yet. I, I trimmed these lines here and, you know, preventing these lines up, up in the circle from, you know, intersecting these, uh, these other ones that might be more in the vein of what in F, of this particular design should be, you know, maybe it's got... Something like this. Maybe there's. Maybe this is kind of like what the crosshairs are. You know? We're looking at something like that. Um, I'll just duplicate that. And move it like this wise. Maybe move it down just a tad. And we'll group it together. And center that. You know, maybe you've got. The remainder of the lines come out like that, maybe. Uh, yeah. So then, what else? So maybe we need uh, we need some text, you know. So like option one, right? Maybe that is. Let's make that white so we can see it. You know, maybe you've got, you know, perhaps there's a, a bunch of buttons down here that, you know, that are options for the person that's navigating this, uh, this drone. And we can just kind of like draw like a shape like this and maybe you know, maybe this text is actually the inverse, you know, or you could choose a color maybe uh, eventually. I like to I like to design things in black and white first and then add all the color at the very end. But uh, let's see, maybe we can just align that to themselves. You know, we'll kind of group that. And just kind of like uh, go something like this. And I don't know, maybe there's something like that in the center. Group that and align that to the center of the artboard. You know, maybe, maybe you want to add a, some more shapes. You know, like let's take, you know, let's take maybe like we'll get some triangles in here and kind of see what that's like. You know, um, Maybe this is just something that I don't know. Maybe we've got uh, I've got a menu option that's kind of coming up here, similar to that uh, that this crosshair, you know. And uh, maybe uh, this bit of information is being, you know, piped into. Maybe maybe there's something on a different screen that's being piped into this information over here. And you know, maybe there's like you know three. There's like some kind of coordinates or something, and so that the user can can see. Oh, maybe you just flip that. Maybe the user can see oh, can see some information that's being you know piped in from a different screen. You know, and then we can take this and make that go off of the screen like that. 
Um, and then maybe we'll just take this and we'll flip it. And then I think we just make sure it hits the edge. We'll group these together and just mirror that. Yeah, and again, we'll uh, we'll group them and align them perfectly. Yeah, you know, maybe you can add a little bit of, um, you know, maybe there's a button or there's something. There's a reason why there's a circle here. You know, maybe this is like the the there's like maybe you tap that and you move it along this line to to focus your, uh, you know, your your aim or something. Uh, that could be. So then after you've gone through and made a bunch of designs and cool shapes and stuff like that, um, you're ready to animate. So here's an FUI screen I've already made for my latest short film, Reinstall. And this is the drone's point of view, kind of very similar to what we were just working on. Uh, the first thing you want to do is in Illustrator, make sure that all of your separate elements are on different layers because uh, when you pull them into After Effects, it's going to you know, pre-compose each layer as a separate, um, as a separate um, layer in After Effects. So you wanna make sure that all of these different layers are accessible by themselves because we wanna animate them individually. Okay, so here we are back in After Effects and I'm gonna import the uh, FUI uh, screen that I've already uh, created. And it's gonna ask you, uh, do you wanna import it as footage or composition? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select composition because we want each and every single one of those layers so we can animate them individually. And then go ahead and click okay and it'll load them all in. And of course you've got you know all your different layers here and it'll show you everything individually which is fantastic now so here we have every individual piece that we've already created in um, illustrator uh, just separated you know as individual components in um, after effects and we can kind of uh, move them around see them. that bottom layer i'm just going to get rid of that that is just the black background that we uh, were using in illustrator and um and from here on out, it's simply a matter of creating animations for each one of these individual layers in a way that applies to the shot that's in the film or in a way that is makes sense to you. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a screenshot of the entire FUI screen by itself, and you'll see why in just a second. Um, the first animation I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom here and start at that very bottom layer. And uh, you'll see it's just a couple of lines. And in order to determine what it is inside of our FUI screen, you can just click on the view screenshot layer and we can say, okay, cool. That looks like that is the uh, center there. And uh, that's gonna outline our uh, little graphics, our little buttons in the center there. So how do we wanna animate that on? Well, uh, my recommendation is to keep most of your animations very simple and very straightforward by either drawing themselves on, maybe moving into place and fading in, or um, you know flickering on and flickering off in order to turn on. And uh, any combinations of those types of animations makes for a very cool, very slick total animation. So for this animation, I want to do a track mat where it starts from the center and then goes out, draws itself out on both sides at the same time to kind of keep it, you know, uh, have symmetry in the center there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick a random color and do, call this track mat. And then I'm gonna make a, and we can actually just animate the scale on this one here. And uh, we'll just scale that one down, all the way down to zero and set a keyframe. And, uh, you know, maybe just do 10 or 20 frames and then scale that back up to the size that we want which is going to be just towards the end there and then we're going to give that a little bit of easing so then it'll kind of just whoosh, open up like that and then choose that bottom layer and then select alpha mat and then just like that it'll draw itself on very very simple and very effective um, right so moving on to the next layer uh, it looks like that center, that little tiny center crosshair is the next layer. 
And uh, for this one, I'll show you what it's like. We can do like a little flickering. So hit um, Option T to select a, to create a new uh, opacity keyframe. And then maybe go ahead by one frame and change the, uh, hit uh, Alt T again. And uh, what we're gonna do is just kind of change the opacity. So it's gonna start by being 0% opacity. And then it'll flick on to 100 and then maybe go down to, you know, half and then maybe two frames forward, go up to like 90, and then the next frame go down to maybe 10, you know, and then maybe 20, and then 100, something like that. And what that's gonna do is kind of make it look like it flickers on, like a piece of electronics or something, and then go that way. So do a little ramp preview so you can see what that looks like. And uh, what I'll do is I will often just kind of copy these flickering keyframes uh, to the clipboard by you know hitting Command C and then just kind of pasting that into whatever other shape that I think you know should be flickered on. Uh, here's another one that is let's check that where is that in our screen that's the top portion. So what I want this to do is I want this to kind of start here and draw itself on and go that way. Uh, one way that you can do that is by using the stroke function. So go into your effects and presets and type in stroke. And we want just the regular old stroke. And then we're going to do choose all masks. And we don't want to stroke them sequentially. We want them to happen all at the same time. And change that to on transparent. And then what we'll do is create a mask on this layer that will oh, turn off Roto Bezier. We're going to create a mask on the stroke layer that is going to give us the pathway that the animation will take. And I'll show you. So we can increase the size of the stroke by increase, increasing the brush size like that. I'm going to decrease the spacing just so there's no gaps. And then I'm going to take that layer 8, this one right here, and do the same exact thing. I'm going to choose Alpha Mat for the stroke layer. And then what we can do is animate the end. I'm just going to turn off the mask so you can see it. We can animate the end function to get that to draw itself on, just like that. And then so what we'll do is we'll start at, uh, at the very first keyframe and do... Uh, we'll start at add a keyframe and do 0. And then let's do 20 frames forward. We'll do all the way up to 100. And then you'll see just like that, it'll animate. I'm just going to turn off the... So it'll, it'll animate just like that, like that, which is pretty cool. And then we need that to happen for all four of them. So we can do that by choosing the mask here. And then we can actually just copy and paste that same exact mask Great, so then after you've got a mask on all four of those, you can see how it animates on just like that, which is pretty cool. And then uh, just keep moving, go on up to the next layer. It looks like this next layer is those crosshairs, cross-hatched features. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that one kind of flicker on just like the other center portion there. And uh, you'll see that that'll just flicker on like that, like it's powering up. And uh, then of course, uh, moving on to the next one. Next one is this kind of circle feature in the center there. It looks like, I'm gonna look at our image, that's the, that part, that's kind of cool. Uh, maybe on this one, I'm gonna just do it, do a scale. So I'll, I'll put a scale keyframe at, at frame zero and then go forward 20 keyframes and then do like that and then give it some easing. And maybe it'll just slide up like that. So it'll come out of the center. Very simple. Uh, next layer is this kind of this cool chevron looking thing. And uh, for this one, I've got all four of them together in one layer. And now that I'm looking at it, I probably should have done each chevron in its own layer because that way you can manipulate it individually faster. But uh, that's no big deal. We're just going to take this and duplicate it three times so then we can um, get them by themselves. I'm going to create a mask for each one of these layers here. And then we can animate them by themselves. 
And I think what I want to do here is one, two, three, four. I think I'm going to make a, a position keyframe by hitting Alt P and then go forward 20 frames and hit Alt P again. And I'm going to do the same thing with transparency. I'm going to put I'm going to put a transparency keyframe on uh, each one. And um, I'm going to do a transparency to be zero at the beginning. And then at the end, we'll do 100, leave it like that. And then for the position keyframes, I'm going to knock, I'm going to, I'm going to nudge them over like 20 key, 20, 20, 20 shift keyframes, one, two, three, four, five. And then uh, what that'll do is that will get them to be, that'll, that'll get them to be animated and um, coming into opacity transparency at the same time. Okay, so that animates on just like that. And then what he can do, I'm going to add some easing to this as well. So then it kind of slows down at the end, like that. And then just keep moving right along to the next layer. Let's see, what do we got? We got this one in the center. And maybe that one, maybe I'll just have that flicker on, like that. And then, and then uh, when you're done uh, with all the animations, you could come in here and you know kind of offset, you know, the animations in a certain way so they don't all happen at the same time. But uh, you know, you kind of stagger them like that, and it goes, it creates an animation that's a couple seconds long and gives more visual interest to the uh, to the animation. Uh, but we'll just put that back for now. And uh, moving back to again, next layer here. See, what is this? I'll get these, these things on the end. And I think I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to duplicate it and then uh, split, split it into two separate uh, pieces so I can animate them in different directions. And uh, first keyframe, position keyframe. And maybe this one will make a little bit shorter and ease that in for 10 frames. And then uh, maybe, let's see, where does where is that? That one, maybe I'll have it come in from the outside over here. So on this one, we'll just move that 20 frames over there. And same thing with this one. Move that one out. And then that will come into screen like that from the sides. Moving right along. And we've got some more cool lines here. And it looks like this is that solid one. And I think what we'll do is we're going to do another stroke for that. We'll add a stroke layer. And then we'll come over here, add stroke, do on transparent, and make sure all masks are checked. And what I want to do here is. Um, I want it to go from the inside out, but I don't want to use the linear method of the uh, solid because if it does, then by the time that the solid is going to be revealing this side over here, it'll start revealing this edge when it reveals here. So then it'll kind of like, but I don't want that. I want it to start from the center and then draw itself on like that, like, like that. So what we can do is on this stroke layer, we can add a mask over here. And uh, it'll look like this. It'll come in just like that. So we'll do alpha mat for this one. And then you'll see as we move the end part, it'll just like that. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see it better. When we, when we move the end, it goes, it draws on, which is pretty cool. So at the beginning, we'll set our end keyframe to zero, and then we'll go forward, let's say 20, I think, and then we'll do 100. Okay, so then once we have that going, uh, you can see that the masks will reveal that. And we just gotta turn the stroke back on here. All right, so then once that is in place, you can see it draw itself on just like that, just like that. Pretty cool. 
and just continue to move forward and take each and every single one of your layers and add some kind of a simple animation to it, whether it be drawing itself on, maybe it scales up, maybe it flickers on, maybe it slides in. Just use a combination of whatever you think is appropriate for that particular shape and how it might add on or how it might animate on. And then once you've added an animation to all of your layers, you'll have a beautiful FUI ready to be comped into any VFX shot. Okay, well, there you have it. Uh, here is a completely done FUI animation, all of these different layers, some of them separated, uh, some of them uh, flashing on and writing on with uh, track mats and everything. And uh, what you would do is you would come in here after you finished creating all of your individual little animations, and uh, you would determine uh, which animations to kind of offset from the rest of them. So for example, if this was a group and you wanted them to come on one at a time, one, two, three, one after the other, you would kind of offset it like that. And uh, you would determine, you know, if you want some text or something to, to show up at the very end, you kind of move it down this way. And uh, yeah, you just kind of go from there. And uh, this is kind of what a base animation would look like after everything is said and done. I added some little uh, wiggle expressions to the rotation of uh, these cool little icons here so they'll just kind of animate themselves um, as the shot kind of progresses. And uh, you know, you'd probably come in here, add some really cool glow and add some like a you know, pixelated screen effect maybe and some distortion and all those great little effects that uh, kind of give it a little bit more sci-fi, a little bit more life. This particular FUI screen is just going to be for the end title on my short film, so so there really isn't any interaction with like an actor or something, you know, uh, in the real world. Um, so there's not going to be any other complex animations, but but when I offset all of them, they will kind of build up and, and give it its own life. And I think that kind of animated life is really what gives it character. So if you add, you know, cool movement, it's something that's simple, or you've got numbers running and different. Uh, different things that kind of blip in and out or change over the duration of a shot, it'll bring a lot more visual interest to your graphics. As you can see, if you take your time with the design, follow the functionality, you too can make an FUI screen fit for the big screen. I hope I've inspired you today to get out there and try making your own fictional user interface. Follow me on Instagram for more cool filmmaking stuff. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, light them if you got them.